Hello and welcome back to our quest series. Previously we started work on displaying our objectives in our quest log UI. In this episode we're actually going to start ticking that objective off. So we're going to do quite a lot of work in regards to how the system works and getting that to reflect it inside that UI. So let's get started. Okay, so now we've got objectives displaying inside our widgets. It's now to go home to get them actually working. And we're going to start off with the interaction one. We've already got that set up in our player character. So to demonstrate that, if we go back to my player character, open it up, and we've got this interactive event going on for what we made earlier. And it's see here we've done this call on objective ID called. So we want to use this system. So first of all, we need an actual object we want to interact with. So let's create a new demo for this. We're going to create a new movement class, actor, and we call this one this strange object. And this strange object is going to have the interface we need. Go into there. Add, add the interaction interface. And then we're going to add some assets to it. We've got a cube to it. We'll choose some materials. We'll just one. Go. And put it up in the air like that. There we go. And now I've got that in there. If I go over to the interact with interface function call, open this up, I can now insert the objective ID. This must match the objective ID I've defined in my data table. So strange object. If it does not match, this will not work. It has to match it. Because then when my player interacts with it, it's going to shout out the objective ID. So now I need to tell my quest here to listen out for this objective being called. Let's go into our quest base. And go into quest base. And on begin play, we're going to get the um, player character. And get uh, my player character. And from my get, get my player character, we are going to uh, bind event on objective. ID called. And we're going to create a new event. Create event. Select function. Create matching function. And this one we're going to rename to on objective ID heard. So this is going to respond to any objective that's being reached what the quest will do is it will check to see if it matches any of its current objectives. So that's going to give us the objective ID, but I need to compare that first of all to the quest details. At the moment, our quests are spawning in with just a quest ID, nothing else. So we need to get this information and populate it. So on the event graph, we're going to create a new function that will happen right on begin play. So let's go to new functions and we go get quest details. And we're going to take the quest ID and we're going to do get data table row. And we're going to choose the quest data. From there, I want to promote that to our quest details variable that we made previously. And then I'm going to break that open because I need now to get the stages. And the stages, I'm going to drag this out and do get copy. And this will be the current stage value put in there. And the get will get sent to our current stage details. Okay. Next thing we'll do is we're going to populate our objective progress. So current objective progress is going to come from whenever we call this get quest details. And we're going to drag that out. And we're going to first of all clear it. So if we, the reason why we want to do that is if we change to a different stage, for example, and progress, we want to get rid of all the progress we've made uh, on there now and instead have different progress we want to store on. So we're going to clear that out and we're going to now populate this list with our objective IDs. So if I take this current stage details, break it open, and we're going to take the objectives and do a for each loop. And go. And on the array element here, we're going to take this out and break that open. 
is we want the objective ID. And what you're going to do on this is you're going to take out your current objective progress and we're going to say add. And we're going to add the objective ID as the string and the quantity, the zero value here is going to be left at zero. So all the objective IDs are set to zero whenever we initiate this object here. Now this would change later on when we do the saving and loading. Now this is what we want. Okay, so let's recap that. We are taking the quest ID which comes through because it is exposed and spawn. We are setting it when we create the request. And then we are getting the quest data from the data table, storing it as a value, breaking open the stages, I had the rest of those details. Um, getting the current stage from it. Get storing those as a variable. Getting the objectives. Then we hide the unconnected ones. Uh, clearing the objective progress. And then re-adding the objective IDs back in with a new fresh zero value. So that's going to go on the event graph on begin play. Right at the start. And on objective ID heard, we're going to go into our current objective progress. And we're going to see if we have a key that matches this. So we're going to do find and plug in the objective ID. And we'll put that into a branch. Now, if it finds it, it means that we're on the correct stage and we have the correct objectives associated with it. If it returns false, that means we are not at quest. So if it's true, this is where we're going to carry on. False, we're going to do return. Okay, so if we're carrying on, we're going to drag out that current objective progress and we're going to add to it and we're going to add in the objective ID and the value is going to be this find value plus one so it increments it and then we do a return node at the end file save so when it hears the objective, it's going to check the current objective progress and see if there's any matches. If there is a match, it's going to add a one value to it. Otherwise, it will just return out. with nothing. Okay, so that's going to happen now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make our objective on our UI read this current objective progress to tell us how many we've ticked off on that. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go over to our uh, quest log widget. So when we add a new quest, what's actually happening? I'll show you again, mind you. We edit the quest log component. When we add a new quest, we're adding it to this array here for current active quests, spawning the quest itself, and adding that reference to this array over here. This is important because we want this array. Okay, we want to know the quests and what values they have on them. So we go back to my quest log. Currently what we're doing is we're getting a current active quest and doing a for each loop on that. I don't want to do that. What instead I want to do is I want to get the active quest actors. So if I take this out here and do quests and get current quests, I'm going to do a for each loop on this instead. I'm going to disconnect that from there, disconnect this from here as well. The for each loop has gone gray, meaning it's wild card again. Break open a little bit over here and plug in the current quests. From the current quests, I can now get the quest ID. And the rest of it is exactly the same. So I just plug that in where it was previously. Okay, so super simple. But the difference this makes is that our quest log entries can now also take this array element instead. So I'm going to go to my quest log entry. And we're going to go and add a variable to it. That'd be the quest actor. Quest base as the there, make it editable and expose and spawn. So now, if I go back to the quest log and refresh this, quest actor now appears here, and I can just plug in the environment now. That means that quest log entry has the information about the quest actor which means everything else attached to it also does because in our quest log a uh, quest entry yep we are creating and putting in this quest id into there uh, to get the tech the quest name but when we are 
passing the quest ID over to quest selected, I want to also pass over the quest actor. So on quest selected, we're going to add new input. Quest face. Quest actor. Wait for refresh this. Yep. Refresh it. And plug that in there. So when I do click on it, the quest log will now know what's happening now. So if I go to find event on quest selected, you'll see quest actor now appears here. The display quest. When display quest happens, we need to know what quest we've got. So we're going to just take this quest actor and apply it through display quest. So we're going to add on here quest actor. Choose our quest actor, uh, quest base, sorry. And choose that one. And that will now appear there. So I can hook that up into there. And now we've got quest actor and display quest. So my end goal is to get to that progress. So I can in here set the objective data across with the current objective quest. So what we're doing over here is on this quest log here on quest actor, I want to change that to the promote to a variable saying current quest actor. So promote to variable current quest. Actor. You can only see one detail at a time, so I don't see one at a time there. And then I'm going to go right to the end when we're doing the objective data going across. This thing needs to know about the quest itself. So I'm going to open up my quest log entry for objective and go to graph, add a reference to the quest actor, change the type to quest base. So expose on spawn editable first and then go back to my quest log entry no not quest log entry uh quest log and when i do that i can refresh this now and you can see quest actor is now being options we can now drag in our current quest actor now to actually read it from it we're going to go to our quest log objective and over here we've got current value going into it so what i want to do is i'm going to take my quest actor out here Get the quest progress. Uh, no, what is it? No, sorry, objective progress. It's called, isn't it? Objective progress. There you go. And we're going to do find and plug in the objective ID. That gives us the value for the current. So, lots going on here. But essentially, what I had to do is pass over the quest actor. I need a reference to this map. So, I had to somehow get the quest actor. My quest log component contains an array of quest actors. So it doesn't matter of reading from that. So working at the top level, we've got a quest log. And we'll um there we go. Over here, we were reading from the current quest rather than the quest names. And the rest is the same. We then went on to display quest and made it so that when you clicked on the quest log entry, it output what quest actor it was needing. Because we made it add it as a new variable type. When you do click on that, the quest log will generate the display quest, store it as a current quest actor, and then pass that same variable into the quest log entry for objectives. And then the objectives are just looking up what progress they have on that quest. So I'm going to save that, and let's go look at that in game. Pick up the quest, accept, and if I go into my quest log here, click on this. You'll see interact with a strange object zero out of one. Excellent. Now let's put in our strange object. Plug that in. Okay. So over here, I won't be able to interact with this, uh, but I'll do it once I've picked up the quest. Accept. Click. And then with the tab, click on here. You can see now interact with a strange object is now one out of one. Okay, so it works. The objective ID matches, therefore it ticked it off in the thing. Now there's one downside to this as well. If I click on this again, it's now going to say two out of one, which makes zero sense. So we're going to add a little detail to our quest log component there to stop that from happening. Uh, also, we've got this error here. Access none trying to read property quest actor or set text uh, quest log entry. So we're going to set that set text there and a quest actor here. 
I'll just pre-construct. I'm just going to add that in at start and convert the validated get. So only do it if it's valid. Okay. Um, yes. So let's go back to our quest base. Sorry. And when we're adding these values on, we only want to do this if we are not already completed it. So I'm going to check this value against its objective maximum quantity. So to get the objective details. We want to make a function on here to get the objective details. So we're going to go in here, get objective data by ID. So we're going to pass in an ID. It's going to be a string. Objective ID. And with that, we're going to take our count objectives in our stage details. And we're going to break that open, get all the objectives we're currently on. And we're going to do a for each loop. And in the for each loop, we're going to break open the data structure, break it open, and you'll see the objective ID. We're going to see if this one equals this one. So drag that out, do equals. Whoops, didn't mean to push that button. There you go, equals. Oh, sorry. This has to be equals, equals, equals. Sorry, string. Um, and this will be the objective ID from here. And as usual, we can hide those connected pins there. Okay, so we want to make sure we are getting the objective data related to this. So if this is true, that means we've got the objective data we want, it's this one. So it's true, return node. And we're going to plug in array element. If it's false, nothing will happen and it'll keep going around. And hit compile and save that. So if we want to go now to the on objective ID heard, we want to check to see if we got the objective capacity to add one to it. So we can just make this a bit bigger up a little bit. And I'm also going to just rather than dragging out objective ID, I'm just going to drag out the objective ID instead. Instead of having a line going right across it, we can just do this. Okay, so I want to get the objective data by ID. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, we want to make this pure. So tick pure. So now when I drag it out, we can just do this and plug in the objective ID. Okay, so I want to make sure that our find value is not the same as or bigger than the maximum quantity value on here. So if I break this open and get our quantity, and make sure that this value is less than this quantity value. And then if that is the case, it would go on and add one to it. Otherwise, it means you're at the maximum. You can't do any better than that. So you'll leave it alone. So now if I go into push play. This guy, accept it. Talk to the box and you now got one out of one. If I try to do it again, nothing happens. Okay, it's already at maximum. And the last thing to do is if it is at maximum, we want to tick that checkbox. So go into our quest log objective. So the one that looks like this, the checkbox, we're going to make it so the checkbox is ticked when it is complete. So on this check is complete, set check state is unchecked at the moment. We got down here, you can see we've already got the current quantity. If the current value is greater than or equal to the quantity value, I am going to do a select node for this. So let's drag out the enum, do a select, plug in the boolean. Now I can choose what I want to do. So if it is greater than, that means it's true. That means I want to make it checked. Otherwise, it'll be unchecked. And that is it. So if I go push play, pick up the quest, to the cube, interact with it, and you can see it's now ticked. Okay. And there we have it. And there you go. After all that work, we can now get our objectives ticking off on our quest log UI. 
Next episode, though, we're going to make some basic UI functionality to appear at the top of the screen to say when you've completed a moral objective. At the moment, nothing really happens, so let's make it a bit more flashy for the player. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you can watch all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.